This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting live from the studios of WMNF Tampa. And we're going to switch to our next topic right now, which is sea turtles and beach, beach nesting in our recent hurricanes. And joining us now is Clearwater Marine Aquarium's Sea Turtle Conservation Program Manager, Carly Oakley. Welcome to Tuesday Cafe, Carly. Thank you. I'm really glad you could join us. So why don't you first tell us about the Clearwater Marine Aquarium? Yeah, so Clearwater Marine Aquarium is a nonprofit organization. Um, so we are responsible for not only educating the public and the future generations, but we also are big on our rehabilitation and our rescue efforts. And one of the most famous rescues you had was Winter the Dolphin, um, who people may know from the films. Uh, so uh, what to, you know, remind people who Winter was. Yeah, so Winter was one of our most popular uh, re rescues that we had. Um, so she came to us with part of her tail that had began to fall off. Eventually the flukes did fall off completely of which we were able to work with her and create a prosthetic tail. Uh, Winter was with us for 16 years. She actually passed away two years ago yesterday. Um, so she was with us for a long time, inspired many with many different physical disabilities as well as mental health and or other conditions that she was able to actually inspire other people to continue and work forward into doing whatever they put their minds to. And what we're going to talk about in the next several minutes is we'll talk about sea turtles in Pinellas County. So give us a crash course on sea turtles. What should people know uh, about these turtles before we uh, get into talking specifically about what's happening this, what happened this season with sea turtles? Yeah, so sea turtles are an endangered species. There are seven different species in the world. Here in the state of Florida, we primarily see three different species nest on our beaches. In Pinellas County itself, we primarily see the loggerhead sea turtles. Um, so sea turtles spend the first few of their lives kind of just growing and getting big enough to reproduce. And when they do already, they'll come back to their natal beach. Now what that is, is simply the beach where they themselves hatched out, made it out, and made it to being this reproducing adult. Um, so when they come onto the beaches, they will either like the area or they won't. Um, we are responsible for marking every single nest as well as false crawl that we see. Um, a false crawl simply is where a turtle comes up, for whatever reason doesn't like the area, turns around, comes back, or goes back into the water. She will come back several times. Um, eventually, hopefully, she does nest and we'll mark that off and watch it every single day until it hatches. Um, so our main responsibility with my team is making sure that we're watching those nests all the way through the incubation period. Uh, sea turtle nesting season here starts May 1st and goes through the end of October, uh, but we start a little bit early just in case we have some early nesters. And that's, I, I believe the coast that you're responsible for is 21 mile stretch of beach in Pinellas County. Is that right? So tell us how uh, during the May through October nesting season, how many nests were there and how does that compare to a typical year? Yeah, so like I said, we start patrolling physically here April 15th. Uh, we start 30 minutes before sunrise and we do do 21 miles of beach every single day, um, looking for those different emergencies and taking that biometric data. This season, we did see 271 nests, whereas the year before we've seen a quite a bit less than that. Um, our sea turtles tend to be on a three-year cycle. So we were expected to have a lower year last year anyways. Um, so this year we're expected to have a, this last season we're expected to have a moderate year of which we did. So at a normal season, we'll see around 300 nests in one season. And then normally we like to see a one-to-one -one ratio when it comes to nest to false crawls. However, this year we had a large increase in false crawls. We had 325 false crawls this year as compared to 271 nests. What might cause false crawls? Yeah, so there are several different things that can cause false crawls. Um, either the sea turtle can see that there's too much artificial lighting. Uh, what that is is simply the use of bright lights. So white light is very uh, deterrent towards sea turtles. It causes them to return back to the water as well as causes our hatchlings to become a little bit confused and orient towards civilization rather than the water. Uh, female sea turtles, if they do see this bright light, they will crawl back into the water. Um, another few things could be is leftover beach furniture. So beach chairs, tents, buckets, any sort of trash. Um, that can definitely spook off our sea turtles as well. 
When they come out of the water, they can't see as clear as they would be able to under the water. It's much like us being able to open our eyes in the water. We don't get to see that crystal clear image. So that could be a reason as to why they would false crawl. Uh, another thing is, is just simply the public. People coming up to the turtles instead of giving them space. Um, they, like I mentioned, they do get spooked very easily. So if they detect in any sort of movement, they will turn around and go back into the water. How many species of sea turtle nested this this summer, this season on, on Pinellas County beaches? Yeah, so in our area of beaches, we were able to see three different species. That's one of the first times we've actually ever been able to do that here at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Um, so normally we primarily see loggerhead species, which does make up a majority of our nests. This season, we are also able to document two green sea turtle nests and also our very first leatherback sea turtle nest. So the first time ever a, sea, a leatherback sea turtle nest, do we know if those eggs hatched? Yeah, so uh, we got to go up to it first thing in the morning. Um, that's when we first start to see the boil or where the hatchling started to erupt at the surface. Um, so a first few of them, they didn't hatch within the time frame that's provided to us by FWC. So we were able to collect those and bring them back to the Clearwater Marine Aquarium just for the rest of the day. Uh, we did go back at the nighttime, and while we were releasing those hatchlings, we were actually able to see the entire nest hatch out and go to the water by itself. Um, so that was definitely unique for us as well, that we got a little extra present on top of not only getting to see the hatchlings, but also getting to see the entire nest hatch out. So quite a number of leatherback sea turtle hatchlings uh, made it into the water off of Pinellas County beaches this, this summer. Yes, and it was very, very exciting. We saw around 50. And that might indicate that one day some or a lot of those same turtles might come back and, and nest again. Yes, we are very hopeful that they'll come back to the area. Again, they tend to come back towards their natal beaches. So we're very hopeful that everybody who made it out makes it into being a reproducing adult. However, sea turtle hatchlings have a survival rate of one in a thousand. Um, so that's why it's very important that we try to make sure that everybody makes it out as best as possible. I want to remind people that we're speaking with the Clearwater Marine Aquarium's Sea Turtle Conservation Program Manager, Carly Oakley. We're talking about sea turtle nesting on Pinellas County beaches. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. Let's talk now about the storms this summer. How did the three major storms, and if there were any minor storms that, that impacted the nests, what, what were the impacts there? Yeah, so our first storm that came through was only a tropical storm by us, but ended up being Hurricane Debbie. Hurricane Debbie only brought two feet of floodwaters into our beaches. However, it was significant enough that we did end up losing a large percentage of our nests. Uh, I believe we said it was around 60% is how much we lost in that first storm. Uh, we did see some nests hatch out before Hurricane Debbie. After Hurricane Debbie went through, we did evaluate our beaches and some nests did make it through that storm. We did have quite a few nests hatch out between Debbie and Helene. Um, unfortunately, when Helene came through with the large storm surge of around six feet, it did wipe out the rest of our nests we had that season. However, we only had a small handful of nests left, so it really wasn't as detrimental as Hurricane Debbie was. Now, Hurricane Milton, we didn't have any hurricanes that were left. However, it did cause um, Florida Fish and Wildlife to end our season just a little bit early, mainly due to lack of activity and also the condition of the beaches. And those hurricanes, especially Hurricane Helene and then Hurricane Milton, kind of changed the landscape of a lot of the beaches in Pinellas County. Some of the sand dunes were, were eliminated or moved, and some of the beaches kind of got maybe shallower and flatter. I, I'm not sure how, how best to describe it, but what impact do you think this might have on sea turtle nesting seasons going forward? Well, we are very hopeful that it doesn't have a negative effect. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the dunes did get washed away in these last few storms, which provide blocking of that artificial lighting. So we may see an increase in the already large amount of disorientation events that we do see with our hatchlings. Um, however, in previous years, we've had storms go on the east coast of Florida, completely annihilate the beaches there, but they did have a record-breaking season that next season. So we really are hopeful that it ends up happening for us too this upcoming season. 
And is the are the beaches themselves the flat parts of the beach? Is there is there anything about them that would indicate that they are still able to be deep enough, maybe for nests? Yeah. So any sand is good. Um, like I said, they just simply need a soft area to be able to create their egg chamber and then cover it. Um, the only other problem that we would really honestly face is if we had any large surges, any large high tides, king tides, um, that unfortunately can cause a negative effect on our nests as well. So we're hoping that they're able to get up far enough that that water necessarily won't reach those areas. Um, with the beach being flattened, that sand did have to go somewhere. So it did not completely annihilate our beaches. Um, it just made them very flat and then doesn't provide any sort of dune vegetation for the turtles to necessarily nest in and keep them away from that high tide line. I want to remind people that we're speaking with the Clearwater Marine Aquarium's Sea Turtle Conservation Program Manager, Carly Oakley. We're talking about sea turtle nesting on Pinellas County beaches and how they were impacted by the hurricanes this year. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. If people see sea turtles that need help, what can they do? Yeah, so the first thing that we ask that you do is you leave them alone. Please do not interact with these animals. They are wild as well as they are endangered. So if you are caught tampering with, harassing, touching, even with the intent that you think that you're helping, you can receive a hefty fine and possible jail time. So the first thing we do is ask you to get hands off. Um, next thing that we ask you to do is to call our local stranding, stranding hotline. Um, that is the aquarium to the phone number to the aquarium. The extension number is one. What we then will ask you is simple questions, where you are, what you're observing, and how big the turtle is. We have somebody on call on staff 24-7, so we will be able to respond to those situations as needed. And let me give, you, give out that phone number. It's 727-441-1790, extension 1. It, if you notice a sea turtle that needs help, stay away from it, but call that number, and you can call that number 24 hours a day? Yep, so 24 hours, seven days a week, even through the holidays, we always have somebody that is on call. And once you leave that information, we will go ahead and respond to it as accordingly as we can. What are some tips that you can give beachgoers, whether they're residents or tourists, about having a, a sea turtle friendly beach experience? Yeah, so the first thing that we like to say that could resonate in everybody's brains is leave nothing but footprints in the sand. Uh, we should live and breathe by this. That simply means that any trash that you're bringing with you, we all like to have picnics on the beach. We ask that you bring all that trash back with you. Um, any beach chairs, beach toys, tents, anything like that, please make sure that you're taking everything that you bring with you back off of the beach. Because if you do leave those items on the beach, it can cause injury to our females and also deter them from nesting. Uh, another thing is, is we enjoy building sand castles and dating sand holes. That is perfectly fine. But we just simply ask that you knock down your sand castles and fill in your sand holes at the end of your beach trip. Simply again, because it can not only spook off our nesting females, but it can also, if the holes are big enough, catch our nesting females as well as our hatchlings. Um, it can also cause injury to humans as well. So it's just easier for all of us to make sure that that beach remains flat and clean. The last thing that everybody can help us out with is by implementing the use of red or amber lighting. Now this detection is harder, or this wavelength is hard for our sea turtles to detect. Um, so that allows you to have some sort of light out on the beach if you have to have one. This does include flashlights. Uh, we do know that you like to catch the ghost crabs, but unfortunately we do ask that you deter yourself from using those bright flashlights and instead use the red or amber. That way you're not disturbing any sort of nesting female or hatchlings that are making their way back to the water. Well, Carly, is there anything else that our audience should know about sea turtles, Pinellas County beaches, and uh, uh, just becoming a, a healthy area for, for a good sea turtle population? Yeah, just being educated and aware of what's going on and when, you're when it's happening is a big thing. So my team is working actively to educate all of our beachgoers and our locals. Uh, we have been able to receive a lot of support from our locals as well that by helping us educate the public and letting them know, hey, let's build in those sand castles, let's build fill in those sand holes. Um, those are definitely the big steps and the easiest steps. The next thing we need to work towards is making it a completely turtle friendly lighting area. 
Uh, we are working with different municipalities right now to get all of their lights switched over to that red or amber coloration. So that is one of the big things that we do like to educate towards, and it'll help us definitely in becoming more friendly towards sea turtle bats and hatchlings, making sure they make it to and from the water safely. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining us on Tuesday Cafe, Carly. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it.